Thank you, General Swan. On behalf of General Lori Robinson, Commander of NORAD and U.S. Northern Command, thank you for the opportunity to speak today at this AUSA event. She sends her regrets as she knows how these hot topic forums are a critical piece uh, and they play an important role in the evolution of our ground-based mid-course defense system, which is the central part of her homeland defense mission. I've been her director, uh, deputy director of operations at U.S. Northern Command for a year and a half, and two topics that I've found that are not commonly understood are the difference between U.S. Northern Command and NORAD, and second, there's a common misconception that, uni that the United States has a missile shield a characterization that is fairly common even amongst the most senior DOD officials and government officials. And I'm hoping today to touch on these ideas, but also to talk about um, the growing threat of ballistic missiles to our homeland. Next slide, please. Here are the topics that I'll be covering today, and I'm hoping to leave plenty of time at the end for questions. However, we're running a little beha behind, so no time for autographs, unfortunately. <laughs> Next slide. First, I'd like to point out General Robinson wears uh, two command hats, that of NORAD and U.S. Northern Command. And as the commander of NORAD, she is responsible for the aerospace warning, aerospace control, and maritime warning for both the United States and Canada. And with her NORTHCOM hat, she does the homeland defense, defense support to civil authorities, and theater security cooperation. And as you all may notice, there is no NORAD shield on this slide as the Homeland Ballistic Missile Defense Mission is strictly a U.S. Northern Command mission, with the exception that our NORAD personnel do perform the Integrated Tactical Warning and Attack Assessment, uh, which is the first piece of any successful BMD, BMD intercept using our ground-based interceptors. A couple of additional points that I'd like to highlight with respect to our mission. General Robinson is, the, is supported for the mission of defending the U.S. that includes the continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii, and is somewhat in unique that she has the responsi responsibility for protecting the PACOM headquarters building in Hawaii from a ballistic missile attack, something that she reminds Admiral Harris of on a regular basis. But we mainly focus on active defense in our mission area. When it comes to the other pillars of mission defense, we work closely with our lead geographic combatant command and other agencies to make sure that our U.S. NORTHCOM equities are addressed. In current policy guidance, as a point of clarification, we are not des designed to defeat threats from our near-peer adversaries, and their government relies on other avenues to maintain that balance of power. And as this slide says, our BMD system was developed to counter a limited threat from a rogue nation. Next slide. Another aspect of our homeland BMD system that makes it unique and sometimes a bit of a challenge is our C2 structure. Command and control of the BMD mission is fairly convoluted, but we make it work. U.S. Northern Command doesn't have any assigned forces for our BMD mission. We rely heavily on supported supporting relationships and lots of man hours down in the trenches to maintain our mission readiness each and every day, an effort that takes, takes on some high visibility, especially in times of increased tensions and rhetoric as we've seen over the last couple of weeks and months. And the key to our success is, next slide please, that incredibly important partnerships that we rely on with our trusted partners. While General Robinson has command and control of our BMD system, the mission is unexecutable without these, the great work of the agencies listed here. A huge part of that supported supporting relationship is the partnerships that we build and establish and maintain. As the, as I, the Iranian threat advances, the need to increase our coordination with both U.S. Uh, UCOM and U.S. Central Command will only continue to grow. And again, a key distinction here is to make between NORAD and NORTHCOM. And albeit they have the same commander, the BMD mission is solely the US, U.S. Northern Command as the Canadian policy prevents them from playing in our BMD system other than the role that they play in the ITWA function. PACOM is another valuable player as a large percentage of our ground-based mid-course defense system lies within their area of responsibility and requires close coordination to meet both of our mission sets on a daily basis. U.S. STRATCOM plays a critical role in our mission, miss, missile warning data and also manages the integration of many of our global sensors, as many of those are dual purpose sensors requiring close coordination on sometimes an hourly basis. And MDA is, and I apologize for Atlanta Falcon fans, but they really are our Tom Brady. They are the guys that, uh, I know, sorry. 
But even when things seem the bleakest, we do turn to MDA and we ask them to figure out the solutions uh, on how we're going to uh, stay ahead of the threat. So they need to identify the technologies, mature the technologies, and then field and test them and bring them online, all while trying to keep the system up and running 24-7. Uh, certainly a challenge and certainly a heavy lifting that is done by MDA and we thank them for that. But again, these partnerships are the linchpin of our success and are particularly important as we try, strive to stay ahead of the threat. Next slide, please. So rogue nations, namely Iran and North Korea, are developing and testing new missile technologies at an alarming rate. The unpredictable nature of both countries' leaders make it extremely difficult to predict where this is all leading. To add to the ever-increasing lethality these missile technologies pose, both countries are actively engaging in denial and deception and complicating our ability to sufficient, uh, with sufficient time to adequately posture our mobile assets. Of particular concern to General Robinson is KJU's activities over the last year. Again, comments that I'm going to echo from General Brooks. KJU's continued pursuit of mobile platforms, both land and sea-based, has a significant impact on our ability to see indications and warnings, which further stresses our lack of persistent sensors and certainly plays a role in our risk calculations. Even more disconcerting is North Korea's apparent change in their test philosophy. The fact that they are now willing to accept failure in pursuit of a true capability is certainly bothersome. It makes the threat of an attack of a ballistic missile on US territory that more plausible. Next slide. Our Homeland BMD system is a system of systems, and all of these indiv individual systems must be properly maintained and in a complementary fashion. We're taking state-of-the-art technology and we're melding it with some 1970s technology, and it's certainly a challenge uh, to keep the Homeland defended. And as you can see, the system is geographically dispersed around the world and in space to provide the capabilities required to defend an area as large as the United States. U.S. Northern Command, in coordination with all of our previously mentioned part partners, work hard to assure the proper readiness of our BMD system 24-7-365. We didn't generally pay an excessive amount of attention to the actual hardware when we talk about the systems, but perhaps even more importantly are the folks that operate this equi equipment each and every day. These soldiers, sailors, airmen, civilians, and contractors previously mentioned a big load falls on the 100th Missile Defense Brigade and the 49th Battalion, our National Guard partnerships there. But these guys are standing the watch each and every day, ever vigilant, always to ensure that we are ready. And as U.S. Northern Command fields new capabilities for our BMD system, we strive to ensure that these crews are properly trained and ready to accept any upgrades as they come online. Next slide. So the question looms, how does this community at large stay ahead of the threat? The addition of Iran to the problem set, with the addition of Iran to the problem set, how do we balance future capability additions to look both east and west? We know, all know that there isn't an unending stream of money. Every penny we spend on our BMD system must be wisely invested in technologies that will significantly enhance our cap uh, capability for now and into the future. And we may soon reach the tipping point where it becomes when it comes to the question of terrestrial-based versus space-based. Next slide. As long as we continue to solely focus and rely on terrestrial basing for our BMD system sensors, there will be gaps and seams in our coverage. Our adversaries are actively working to exploit any of these gaps and seams. And I'm not saying that space isn't without its flaws, but I believe it's time that we take a hard look at a space as an option. The missile defense agency's programs like the BMDS, uh, Overhead Persistent IR Architecture, or BOA, and the Space-Based Kill Assessment Program show promise with capability additions and are good examples of what some out-of-the-box thinking can do to capitalize on space. BOA capitalizes on sensors already on orbit to, to provide the BMDS system with more and possibly better data. The space-based kill assessment program is using the concept of commercially hosted payloads to get a fairly significant number of sensors on orbit on time at a fraction of the cost of traditional DOD space programs. This is the kind of thinking that we need to continue to pursue as the sticker shock 
of most space program is perhaps the biggest impediment to capitalizing on the, this domain within the BMDS system. Next slide. So in closing, despite some of the bad press that our ground-based mid-course defense system gets from time to time, U.S. Northern Command is confident we are effectively employing the system to defend the United States homeland from a rogue nation threat. We stand ready along with our mission partners to execute on a moment's notice. We continue to monitor ballistic missile progress in North Korea and Iran, and we look for new and innovative technologies in order to outpace the threat. Finally, the new administration does provide us with an opportunity to articulate that threat, to advocate for new technologies and new solutions, and potentially to allow us to seek additional funding, funding that will definitely be needed as our potential adversary grows their capabilities and further complicates our ability to come up with an intercept solution. Again, I want to take, thank you for the opportunity to get up here and speak. I'll take some questions, but before I do that, I, I will have to run this afternoon. I do have Colonel John Wanot, who is from NORTHCOM. Uh, he's my Missile Defense uh, Division Chief. He'll be here this afternoon. If you have particular comments or questions for U.S. Northern Command, please look up John and, and pass those to him. But with that, I'll take questions. What is the status of planning for an East Coast missile field? Um, as most of you or some of you may know, um, the um, NDAA required that we do an environmental uh, assessment of some locations along the East Coast for a continental interceptor site. So originally there were four locations that were looked at. I think we're down to three. Uh, that environmental impact study uh, is in progress right now. We anticipate that uh, the Missile Defense Agency, who's the lead organization for that, uh, will be publishing those results. Uh, and the part that U.S. Northern Command plays with that is that we will provide an operational assessment uh, of those locations. So, again, um, something that we've been directed to do is look at an East Coast site. Um, I think if you ask General Robinson, she would say that the threat is something that we watch each and every day out of Iran. Uh, but right now, if she had any more money to spend, she would uh, put it into better sensors is where she would like to place that effort. But obviously, as that threat continues to grow, an East Coast site will become even more important. So, The discussion goes on a lot about the Canadians. And uh, is there any discussion about bringing the Canadians into the BMD world? Yes, sir. Um, obviously, with, they have a new administration as well, and, and that is uh, something that uh, their policy folks are certainly uh, discussing is whether they do want to come on board with the missile defense. Um, and as we continually try to evolve NORAD, the evolution of NORAD is something that uh, we are looking at, and that is certainly a piece that if the policy concerns in Canada do go away, that, that they could potentially come on as partners. So uh, really it's a policy dis discussion at this time, but certainly something that is up for discussion and, and more hopeful uh, because I think uh, there would be efficiencies gained if we could team up for defense of North America as a whole as opposed to breaking out. Be I'm really the one person in NORAD NORTHCOM that keeps us separate is because of the BMD uh, is the, the one big thing that, that keeps our two commands separate. 